idea becomes real. That's the opening line of Saga, a sci-fi fantasy comic by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. The launch of this comic was massive. The first issue alone had four reprintings selling over 70,000 copies. The comic's a New York Times bestseller, it's won 12 Eisner Awards, 17 Harvey Awards, and a Hugo Award. And that thing came out six years ago, March 2012. Since then, there have been over 50 issues and eight volumes, and still, the best-selling graphic novel through Diamond last year was Saga. It continues to be massive. Which leaves me with one perpetually lingering and creatively enthralling question. How are they- I, how- how- what do- how- how is it- how is it still so good? How is it- how is it still so good? How is it still so good? How is it still so good? So let's try to figure that out, because how? How is it- how? How? First off, spoilers for Saga. Saga spoilers. Second off, what exactly is Saga? I don't even know, there's so much. I mean, the main thing is Marco and Alana, Elena, Alana, Alana, an alien couple from two warring races who have an adorable kid together, Hazel, and try not to get constantly murdered. But then there's also Prince Robot, the robot prince. There's the Will and Lion Cat, there's Gwendolyn, Sophie, Sophie, Isabel the babysitter ghost, Goose the cutest thing in the universe, Upshur and Doff the gay fish journalist, which sounds like an amazing fanfic, I'd read that. Plus alligator butlers, cyclops novelists, botanical drug dealers, planet babies, dart dogs, abortion cowboy owls, just everything. There's everything. It's the best. Third off, I think figuring out how Saga is still so good, it's so good, is actually three questions. Question one, what elements made Saga so good in the first place? Question two, has it maintained those elements? Question three, if so, what makes those elements so consistently captivating? Let's figure this out. Transition. What made Saga so good in the first place? Uh, a lot. Very much, very much stuff. The universe, for one, it is Game of Thrones levels of fleshed out. It feels old, but new and lived in, but infinite. And the scale of some of it is just, I mean, literal planet babies. And that whole universe is gorgeously brought to life by the art. Fiona Staples is just, I mean, look at, and then the colors, it's so perfect. And the dialogue, if there's one thing Brian K. Vaughn nails every dang time, it's the dialogue. From Runaways, to Why the Last Man, to Ex Machina, to Lost, he doesn't even get his usual crutch of pop culture references in this book, and the dialogue is even stronger because of it. It's that perfect intersection of natural and brilliant and hilarious and poignant. Plus there's how Saga takes 1000% full advantage of being a comic with its mind shattering scale and its use of years spanning long form storytelling and the phenomenal lettering by phonographics, it couldn't be anything but a comic, especially when it comes to its mature content. Saga is very uncensored. Uncensored to the point that it probably wouldn't even fly on HBO. Uncensored to the point that I can't show or talk about half the book on YouTube without risking demonetization. Uncensored to the point that they weren't allowed to sell issue 12 through the Apple App Store due to an image depicting, how am I allowed to say this? Mouth to wiener resuscitation see that seems worse and i love all of that i love saga's willingness to show or talk about literally anything which brings me to what i think is the heart of the comic the boil it all down to this one make or break thing of the comic saga's humanity no matter how magical spacey bonkers it gets saga's realism is unparalleled it presents characters and situations that partly thanks to that lack of censorship feel more realistic and believable than 99% of other popular fiction. 
Whether it's the brutality of its violence, or the vulnerability of its sex, or the heartbreaking accuracy of its losses, or even the banality of its everyday life, Saga shows us every corner of life finding meaning in the meaningless and bringing a level of relatability to every single character in that every single character is human, even if they're not a human. Yes. Seriously though, so much stuff has changed throughout the ongoing saga of saga, deaths and births and deaths and deaths, but it's consistent in that fluidity and the humanity of the comic and all those other amazing elements have only become more deeply ingrained. Okay, now you can do the title card. Brian K. Vaughn has always been upfront about why all that space adventure stuff is in the book. I really wanted to get back to a new original series, and some of my friends in comics are like, it's kind of a shitty time to launch something new because the economy is tanking and sort of people are want uh, sort of the characters they grew up with. And at the same time, my wife and I have been talking about having kids, and some of my sort of liberal, well-intentioned friends were like, how could you bring a kid into the world? You know, it's an awful time. And I realized that <laughs> making a comic and making a baby were kind of the same thing. And so I could combine these two, and it would be less boring if I set it in a crazy sci-fi fantasy universe. So it's not just anecdotes about diaper bags. It's like he's feeding us our vegetables, but they're hidden inside this rich, beautiful chocolate cake. But where you'd get all sugared out on the chocolate cake, those vegetables are way more sustainable. And as it turns out, those vegetables are flippin' delicious and I'm terrible at analogies. So what is it about that humanity, about those vegetables, that's so continuously fascinating? Well, first of all, it challenges us on multiple levels. It challenges us on a societal level. You hear a lot about how good science fiction holds a mirror up to humanity. And while a lot of science fiction forces that introspection by holding a mirror up to a single aspect of humanity, like an episode of Black Mirror, Saga holds a galaxy-sized mirror up to all the aspects, war and love and sex and death and birth and family and all of it. It also challenges you on a personal level. When you relate so strongly to a character, you begin to experience the story through their perspective and mentally put yourself in their position. You start to ask yourself, what would I actually do in this situation? How would I act? Would I act? It forces you to think about how moral of a person you really are and how immoral you're willing to be. And through that introspection, you start to learn more about who you are as a human being, your values, your strengths, your fears. And the more you think about those things, the more you're challenged in that way, the more you evolve. You start to learn the same lessons that the characters are learning. Personally, I think Saga isn't still so good. It's better. Because with every issue, you become more invested in and terrified for and in love with the characters. You watch them grow and you grow with them. I come back to Saga month after month because in my mind, it's real, it exists. The world of Saga is one of the most creative and beautiful and totally absurd settings I've ever seen. When it comes to believability, it should not work, but it totally works, and that's entirely because of the authenticity of its characters, their personalities, their actions, their motivations, their humanity. They ground us and immerse us, which creates that perfect addicting paradox of extreme realism and extreme fantasy. Real characters and real emotions. This is how a fictional family becomes real. This is how a universe becomes real. This is how an idea becomes real. Hey 
Hey gals, guys, and otherwise, quick massive shout out to everyone who makes Saga, everyone who has sold me issues of Saga, everyone who buys Saga so that they can keep making Saga. I love you. And leave me a comment about who your favorite character is because I could talk about Saga for forever. It's the best. Go read it. It's the best. And you know what else is the best? The Make Stuff Patreon over at patreon.com slash roselion. It is literally what keeps this channel alive, and me alive actually. Uh, patrons get access to a ton of exclusive videos and comics and posts, and you can even watch every Make Stuff video one week before everyone else for just a dollar a month. Plus, you can get a shout out at the end of each video like these gorgeous stuff makers. TC Arkenberg, I love you very much. Sandy Swagger, I love you very much. Medium D Speaks, you have an awesome YouTube channel that everyone should check out and I love you very much. Amethyst, I love you very little. Wait, no, I meant much, I meant much. Adam B Crafter, I just, I just love you very much. Robin, I love you very, as the Spanish say. Mucho. And thank you to all these unbelievably dope stuff makers who gave me slightly less money than the other stuff makers so I don't get to say your name out loud. I love each and every one of you very much. But again, not enough to say your names aloud. And finally, a humongous thank you to Haley Roselion for helping me out a ton on this video and even taking Fiona Staples' handwriting from the book and making an entire font from it. That is insane and you are the best and I like, Love, love you. Anyway, go check out the Patreon. Go be an awesome person. And as always, go make stuff. Due to an image depicting, how am I allowed to say this? Mouth to wiener resuscitation? See, that seems worse. Genital suction. Phallic taste test. An image depicting a blow occupation. The old popsicle stick on the tongue. Immoral, oral, no. Olive Garden's unlimited breadsticks. God, censorship is stupid.